At this time, I will go ahead and call this meeting to order. And uh, Kim, I'm going to have you lead us in the pledge today, please. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kim. Uh, next item is the adoption of the agenda. Chair will entertain a motion to, oh, Madam <laughs> Manager, everything good? Yes, sir, everything's good. Good morning. Chair will entertain a motion then to adopt the agenda and allow Chair to deviate as necessary. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Our agenda is adopted. Call to the public. Uh, I'm going to go to the cyber world first. Is there anyone on the Zoom call that wishes to address the board at this time? Uh, seeing none, then we will come here to the audience. And the first speaker is Mr. Tom Walsh. Uh, you have three minutes, sir. So. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you and good morning. Good morning. I represent the Friends of the Tubac Presidio State Park and Museum. At year end, the Friends are doing well, although like everyone else, we still need more volunteers. I want to thank the Board for their help with our uh, grant application to the Tohono O'odham Nation, which we did receive. We're only open five days a week. We used to be open seven. But well, we currently have some exhibits of photographs taken by middle schoolers from the Nogales Boys and Girls Club and uh, artwork by blacksmiths from Flagstaff down through Tubac that is drawing much attention. We're also doing outdoor exhibits with some success, including music, lectures, and the uh, revelation that uh, Coronado was probably in the area. That was last weekend. Our attendance in 2021 was over 10,000 which is 2,000 more than in 2022, but still 5,000 less than in 2019. Our biggest challenge is getting more visitors to the park through the front door. We recently had visits from the social media staff and the historian from the state parks. They greatly enjoyed their visit and will help promote the park more than they have in the past. We will also going to be visited shortly by the deputy director and the chief of operations of state parks. Mm. The intergovernmental agreement between Santa Cruz County and state parks is due for renewal at the end of March. Hopefully they will get that to you soon for your review. Additionally, the Presidio Park was recently promoted in the Santa Cruz Valley National Historic Area newsletter. We welcome all the positive promotion that we can get. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Mr. Waltz. We appreciate the great job you guys do out there. Uh, next is Vicki Barden. Vicki, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So good morning. first, having watched Squid Games, what happens if I speak too long? Uh, well, we can't tell you because no one has ever uh, gone past <laughs> the three minutes, so don't okay. be the first one. <laughs> I'll try not to. Um, so a couple of years ago, you guys approved uh, giving some of the CDBG money to the Boys and Girls Club to do renovations at the club. And it's finished, and it is amazing. So I'm here to say thank you. The noise level, I mean, you, you can't believe what the club looks like. If you walk in there, you wouldn't know you're in the same place, number one. So I'd like to invite you all to come and check it out. We're back to normal. We have 100, 125 kids a day. So everything's going really well at the Boys and Girls Club. It's nice to have heat. It's nice. We, we haven't tried the air conditioning yet, but I'm pretty sure we're going to like that too. <laughs> but the biggest difference for me has been the noise level. So I want to thank you guys so much. I want to thank Mary Dahl for everything she went through to make it happen. I want to thank Jennifer for sticking with us through the whole thing because it had its ups and downs. What should have just taken a few months ended up taking almost two years. So. Thank you all very much. And please stop by the club when you get a chance to take a look. Great. Thank you, Vicki. Appreciate it. I'm glad you didn't test the three-minute limit. <laughs> I think what happens here is like if you watch the Jimmy Fallon show and you don't sing the lyrics right, you get squirted with water. I think oh. that's what's going to happen. 
So, uh, Chris, you have two of them, so we're going to extend the time a little bit. So, uh, come up and uh, go ahead and make your presentation, my friends. So, is Juan in charge of the squirting the water? Just well, as long as he I, understands. I'm giving, you, I'm giving you extended time, so. All right, so I still feel the pressure. So, All right. Well, yeah. well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Supervisor Bracker, uh, Chairman Ruiz, Supervisor Molera. I see we have a couple people here, Mr. Fanning, Vicky, a couple of superstars from our community do awesome stuff. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Today, morning. you guys are going to be making a decision on the settlement for CenturyLink, um, which is part of the Santa Cruz County School Superintendent's Office Consortium E-Rate Project. And I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you to some people that have been involved with, with this project for the past four years. Many more contributed and are not on this list, but I wanted to make sure I identify a few of these people. First of all, of course, the Santa Cruz County School Superintendent Alfredo Velasquez uh, for giving us the opportunity to do the project. He's always looking to do more things in our community and help the kids, and this is an, ex an example of that. Second of all, all of you uh, the Board of Supervisors, County Manager Jennifer St. John, for giving us permission and then supporting us throughout the project. Number three, the various public officials that supported us, which include uh, Arizona Senator Kristen Sinema and her staff, Arizona State Representative Daniel Hernandez, and Arizona Corporation Commission Member Leah Marquez-Peterson and her staff. Number four, the legal representation, Gina Spade from Broadband Legal Strategies and John Brady from Udall Law Firm. And of course, the leaders of the schools and libraries that form part of the Santa Cruz County School Superintendent's Office Consortium, which includes Nogales Unified School District, Santa Cruz Elementary School District, or Little Red, Sonate Elementary School District, Patagonia School Districts 20 and 5, Mishakai Academy, Sacred Heart Catholic School, and Nogales Santa Cruz Libraries. All of them are very supportive. I would like to especially thank Nogales Unified School District Superintendent Parra and the governing board for being part of the consortium when they didn't have to, but they were part of it, uh, which provided the weight we needed. <coughs> also, I wanted to thank Santa Cruz Elementary School District, or Little Red, once again, because they are the group that stayed with us this entire time. I'd also like to thank the Santa Cruz County Attorney's Office, led by George Silva, uh, when he placed Kim Hunley on this project, everything changed. She was quick, straightforward, and found the help that we needed. I'm sure that we, there were days that she didn't want to deal with us, because we were pretty annoying, but she did, and she did it with the utmost professionalism. Sorry about that. <laughs> I also want to thank, I don't know how he got this title, Chief Information Officer Juan Valderas. He initially was brought on just for technical support, right? But he quickly became part of the project. He was there in every meeting. And he was a... <laughs> <laughs> Get exactly. He was a person, <laughs> right? He was a person who kept me from losing it, right? All right, Juan, that's it. You don't deserve that. All right. I also want to thank Mylan Eaton, who was the state E rate director for schools. Mylan was the one who gave us the backbone. Obviously, being up against something like this could be very intimidating, right? But he was the one who gave us the confidence to understand that we were in the right the entire time. And then finally, Frank, Frank, Ver sorry, I've been hanging on Mr. Velasquez for too long. <laughs> Frank Vanderhorst, he was our E-rate consultant. Uh, he was kind of drugged through the mud quite a bit, but he is a person who constantly acts with integrity and honesty and good intentions. And through the, Yav the Yavapai Educational Service, led by Tim Carter, this, the 
Yavapai County School Superintendent. Uh, they're the largest e-rate consultant in the state, and they do that so that they can make it affordable for schools to get that, that leadership when it comes to e-rate. So I just wanted to mention those people because it's a big deal. It's a tough process. So thank you for that. Now, quickly, something a little bit more positive, a little more, more fun. February, I see Francisco in the back next to Jesus. Francisco Padilla is here from First Things First. Two Francisco's, Frank Dillon and, and then Francisco Frank, there Padilla. It is. So. <laughs> All right. So today we celebrate Early Childhood Education Awareness Month. There's a proclamation on the, on the agenda. This is the sixth annual uh, year that we've done this, or this is the sixth year that we've done this. The members include Alicia Delgado from Child Resources and, and Referrals, Anna Rosas from Child Parent Centers, Nogales Neighborhood Head Start, Cassandra Camacho, Child and Family Resources, Denita Lopez from the Nogales Public Library, Denise Ortega also from the Public Library, Evan Corey from the Santa Cruz County School Superintendent's Office, Francisco Padilla from First Things First, Jennifer Agallos from the U of A Cooperative Extension, also Yada Castro from Mariposa Community Health Center. What we try to do is we try to bring awareness every February for the importance of early child education. Uh, from zero to five, 90% of a child's brain is developed, so it's a big deal. What we've seen through COVID is that children many times aren't, haven't received this formation that they need, this education that they need, and entering kindergarten, they're behind. And if you enter kindergarten behind, you're in trouble, it, not only academically, but socially, emotionally, everything. So what we try to do every month, every February, is the people who have the children, show them the resources that are available, and then the people who, who can make the decisions as far as health care, or sorry, child care, that you understand the return on investment for taking care of our children zero to five here in the county. So I hope everyone uh, maybe watches a video that you see on social media. We'll have different types of communications out. Take the time, watch it. Mr. Velasquez did a wonderful video talking about it all, so that'll be on our website. And just kind of educate yourself on the importance of early childhood education. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there someone on the uh, Zoom call that wants to be unmuted to talk on the call to the public? Or did you just have the? Yeah, oh, because you had it under. OK, so anyone else under call to the public? If not, uh, we'll move on then to current events. One, Board of Supervisors, Vice Chairman Brecker. Good morning. Good morning, sir. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, this past Friday, I was invited to and privileged to attend the groundbreaking ceremony for the $38 million Cure in Place IOI, joining my fellow supervisors, Moleta and Chairman Reese, at this historic event. These repairs are essential to protect our groundwater, our environment. The frequent breaches of the IOI were detrimental to our community and the entire Santa Cruz River Valley. But reaching this point took a focused effort spearheaded by Misael Cabrera from the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality. I also want to thank Edna Mendoza from ADEQ as she was on the ground making sure no one ignored this troubling situation. Past Commissioner Harkin and current Commissioner Geithner were also instrumental in furthering this solution. Governor Ducey, State Senator Griffin, and our friend, late Senator Pratt, Senator Gabadon, our federal congressional delegation, particularly um, Senator Sinema, Senator Kelly, and Congressman Grijalva, along with NADBank and Freeport McMoran Foundation, which contributed a million dollars to this project. I am grateful to everyone that came to the table with a can-do attitude to address this reoccurring problem. There still remains a lot of work to do on addressing some of the broader watershed and stormwater basin issues in Nombos Nogales region, and I remain committed to working with all stakeholders implementing the long-term solutions. And I also have another thing that happened. On Monday, January 17th, South 32 released a pre-feasibility study for the Taylor deposit at their Hermosa project located in District 3 near the town of Patagonia. I've been anxiously awaiting this pre-feasibility study. While this project has the potential to create many economic and public benefits to Santa Cruz County, 
There are also public challenges that this mine can bring to our community. I applaud South 32 for selecting the mining technique that minimizes the footprint of the project. And I know that they have made other investments such as treating the le legacy tailing and water issues. But there remain several questions that I hope we can work on together in addressing, particularly the, pre the preferred routes to and from the mine. The pre-feasibility study presented a lot of information about the mining deposits and some of the mining techniques. And I hope they provide some of the same level of information on the routes for the transportation of the minerals out of the mine site. I've advocated for a route that touches State Route 82 west of the current proposed routes. I'm of the opinion that making the entrance of the area in the area of Nogales International Airport will ensure that the maximum economic impact will occur in Santa Cruz County and in fact could lead to future developments. I'm told that in the next few weeks, South 32 will be providing more information related to economic impacts resulting from their investment. I look forward to learning more, but I also want to learn more about how together we can maximize those economic impacts that directly responding to the public burdens such as the project could believe. And thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Moleta. Morning, Mr. Chairman. Morning. I will be brief. Uh, <laughs> Sorry to eat up all the Bruce time. Bruce covered some of our <laughs> activities. Uh, I had the honor of uh, representing uh, our county at, at Small Counties uh, last week. And uh, we had uh, several legislators there talking about how there is abundant money at the state level. So good time to go after some of that. Um, I also uh, attended the executive uh, CSA board the following day where John Halakowski was the guest speaker. And uh, basically uh, he talked about SR-189, Bruce and all. Uh, all the hard work uh, everyone in this community did to uh, make that happen, and, and it's finally uh, going to be complete here pretty soon. Um, I also attended the IBWC uh, uh, IOI uh, groundbreaking. Uh, I want to personally thank Bruce because uh, he brought this forward to us, and I was a little hesitant at first. Uh, and. Uh, but once we got going, we, we did a lot of lobbying, we did a lot of pushing, shoving, and uh, I, I also want to thank Andrew Hansen uh, at EPA in D.C. because he, he did some good work for, for us. And, and the irony there is that uh, a good friend of mine that coached football with me here at Nogales High School, uh, it happens to me that is really good friends from him in Iowa. It's just a small world, but uh, uh, I also want to thank uh, Misael. Misael, uh, uh, you know, did not stop. You know, he pushed, shoved, and, and he made it happen. You know, I know it's not a, a full fix of the IOI, but like Bruce says, it's going to take care of the leakage and uh, provide some safety for our community. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Supervisor. Wildcats won this week, right? They yeah, they did. Week. I know our, our, our Sun Devils aren't aren't, aren't very well, but that, remind you. that's okay. <laughs> I'm I, I'm going to be like the Wildcat fans, or I'm just going to live in football fantasy land. And say, so, what did the uh, football team do to the U of A team? Oh, that's right. Uh, no, hey, good for them. They too changed, bad, they too changed bad the, the girls billboard to Stanford, though. I, you know, I was pulling for them, but they changed the billboard on 919. Yeah. On I-10. Oh, they did? Yeah, they, they did the last four years. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just a reminder. Anyway, um, getting back to, uh, I, I also attended the, the groundbreaking, and uh, while there are a lot of people to thank, this board has never stopped supporting uh, full funding for, that, for the IBWC to be able to take care of the issues it just because uh, it goes through all three districts it starts here at the border with district one goes through district two and three and eventually all the way up into Tucson and other parts north so at the end of the day uh, all the people that that were mentioned have been uh, uh, very instrumental in securing some of the funds but we've also put money skin into the game as well so 
Our commitment is for the health, safety, and well-being of all our residents of Santa Cruz County. I know I'm still watching some of the legislative <laughs> uh, bills that are being introduced. A lot of them have to do with elections, and my big concern with one of the bills is that if somebody complains, they can call for a whole new election, or the legislature can decide who they're going to vote for, which to me is taking the vote away from the people, and that's not what they were elected to do up there. And I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent, that is not the way this country works. And I think most of you that are either watching or here in, in the audience should call all these people and let them know that the right to vote is our vote, and our vote is, is protected and it's not up to them to decide who they think we should have voted for. They're going to make it a lot harder for elderly. I know a lot of elderly people don't, don't drive. A lot of elderly people depend on uh, mail-in ballots. And now there's even talk about uh, uh, civics tests and other things that I've seen some of the commercials from some of the candidates. Folks, this is not the America that we grew up in that many people have fought for to protect our freedoms, to have a group of people up there decide what it is that they think uh, we should do. And so please uh, be aware. Uh, I know that uh, it, it's tough, and I don't know on what side of the issue many people are, but I still think at the end of the day the vote is sacred. It's the will of the people, and it should continue to be the will of the people that elect and not a state legislature or an attorney general or anybody else for that matter. So uh, excuse me if I'm passionate about it, but uh, I, I'm just very concerned uh, of what's occurring in, in our state and across the country. So with that, I will move on to, we'll go and do uh, department reports and activities. Huh? Oh, well. Manager. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm skipping you over. It's all right. You don't have anything to say, do you, uh, Jennifer? I'm sorry. Manager's report. I apologize. No problem. I, I, I get going. And <laughs> no problem. Good morning again. Good morning. Um, over the last two weeks, Sonia, Jesus, and I attended the our annual health insurance pool meeting. Um, Mauricio and I have been trying to, or have been meeting with our consultant to wrap up the ARPA funds that we're going to roll out to our public um, on Thursday. So this Thursday, the nonprofit um, group grouping will open, and those are grants between twenty-five thousand and forty-five thousand. We have a press release coming out for that, and everything will be on our website for more information. We also have an RFP on your agenda today for the forgivable loans. Uh, those won't be out to the public until April or May-ish, uh, but we do need to advertise for this RFP to get that process going. And I also attended the IOI groundbreaking virtually, though, so <laughs> that's all I have to report today. Thank you, Jennifer, and I, and I apologize, and, and I'm glad you got that. Uh, I uh, went through the 24 pages of the RFP that you sent us. Uh, I mean, talk about... <laughs> having to dot all our I's and cross our T's, and there are so many things that one has to do because of the federal money. So uh, legal staff, thank you so much. We appreciate that. I mean, you got that uh, nice form, so we look forward to that. Okay, if there's no other, then we'll go on to item F, Department Reports Activities, one, finance, cash, investment, expenditures, and revenue reports. Mr. Chavez, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The cash and investment report, the general fund has an overall balance of $17,453,334 with an investment amount of just a little bit over $10 million. The road fund has an overall balance of $2,393,876 with an investment amount of $815,000. The flood control district has an overall balance of <coughs> excuse me, one million six hundred sixteen thousand six hundred and sixty with an investment amount of just a little bit of a million dollars. The jail district has an overall balance of two million one hundred and ninety thousand nine hundred and five with a little bit over a million dollar investment. Total for all funds overall balance forty one million one hundred seventy two thousand six hundred and thirty six with an investment amount of fourteen point nine million dollars. 
estimated end of the month balance thirteen million nine hundred sixteen thousand one hundred and fifty three dollars. Any questions on the finance report? No questions. Not? Thank you. Thank you, Mauricio. Yes, so at this time, Chair will entertain a motion to recess and convene into the flood control district. So moved. Second. 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 Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We are now convened into the flood control district. Item one, director's project report. Angie, I understand you're going to give the report today. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Um, do you have any questions on the report before you? I think we all got the report. Is there any questions? Are there any changes or anything to the report? That was Not at this time. Okay. Uh, any report from the city of Nogales? None. Town of Patagonia? None. Okay. Thank you, Angie. At this time, we'll go ahead and open it up for public comment. Hearing none, Chair will entertain. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn our flood control and convene into the jail district. So moved. Second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying <coughs> aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We are now convening into the jail district board. Item one, discussion, possible action to approve a cooperative purchase agreement with APIC Solutions Inc. for No, we did. We moved. Huh? Okay. Did I miss something? I thought we, we voted. No, I asked, so I said recess, I mean adjourn and convene into the jail district. And there was a motion in a right. second, and we voted. Thank you. Yeah. My apologies. What's the matter, Mr. Breck? Are you feeling okay? <laughs> Let me see. I think you're a little warm there. <laughs> okay, let's go back again to item one discussion possible action to approve a cooperative. Purchase Agreement with APIC Solutions, Inc. for Santa Cruz County Detention Center, Center Protection and Security System Services in the amount of $15,500. Everything in order there? Okay, yeah. Charles, entertain a motion. Move to approve. I'll second that. Discussion. <laughs> <laughs> None all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, at this time, and we'll do the executive session at the end. So. This time, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn our jail district and reconvene regular session. So moved. Do I hear a second? Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries. We are now convened into regular session. Item I, a action items. One, discussion, possible action to approve the appointment of precinct committee person for the Santa Cruz County Republican Party. Christina R. Is it Schmerit? Sherritt. Sherritt. Two back 11, and that was requested by Steve McEwen, chief, uh, chairperson of the Santa Cruz Recu Republican Party. Okay. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously, and the appointment is made. Bipartisan support. Item two discussion possible action to approve proclamation designating February. 2022 as Early Childhood Education Awareness Month. That came out of the superintendents, as we heard. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion ca uh, carries and the proclamation is approved. Item three, discussion, possible action to approve modification number four to the cost reimbursable subcontract with the Arizona Board of Regents, University of Arizona, from July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, in the amount of $5,000. Everything in order. Chair will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Fair okay. second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Oh, good. We got something from the good school here. Item four, discussion, possible action to approve data sharing agreement with the Arizona Board of Regents on, on for and on behalf of Arizona State University, ASU for a term of five years. Everything in order? Chair will entertain a motion. Move Aye. to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Item five, discussion, possible action to approve service agreement with Knowledge Capital Alliance through 
the Public Health Emergency Preparedness Program with the Arizona Department of Health Services for COVID-19 testing, tracing, and vaccination plan from January 1st, 2022 through July 31st, 2022 in the amount of $65,312.50. Everything good? Shall I entertain a motion? Move to approve. Do you hear a second? Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item six, discussion, possible action to approve request for proposal number B01-22-CO01 for community development financial institution to provide management administration services for the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, direct assistance for local governments, forgivable loan program. That's the one you sent us. Uh, okay, and everything is good. Chair will entertain a motion. Move to approve. I hear a second. Second. Any and discussion, comments? I just want to thank uh, Mauricio, Jennifer, Angie, all involved. This is a, a great effort. Thank you. Anything else? I'd like to thank all the staff, the you know, Kim, your team, Jennifer, your team, Mauricio, Angie, and just thank this board for you know being open to this type of work. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Laura. All right, Laura. Well, uh, the thing is that there's funds available, and I hope our community is able to take advantage of it. That's what those funds are designed for. Uh, we've got the program and the steps in place already. So hopefully when it, it opens up, please, if you know people that are struggling or have had issues with uh, COVID, please apply. Those monies are there and, and you may apply where it's, 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 uh, it's a loan, but it's forgivable at the end. You don't have to pay it back. So please take advantage of that. Yeah, there, just, there just aren't a lot of communities our size that are yeah. doing this. And so I think it's really tremendous yeah. that we've stepped up. So. Great, so if there's no other comment or discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Item seven, discussion, possible action, recommendation of approval of application for a liquor license for Italian peasant in Tubac. Everything in order, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir, everything in order. Move Carolyn, to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Item eight, discussion, possible action. To approve bond for duplicate warrant number 4-040458 in the amount of $709.70 dated 12-1721 payable to Tiger Promotions. Madam Clerk, everything in order? Yes, sir, everything Great. in order. Chair will entertain a motion to move to approve. We hear a second. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Item nine, tax valuations A through F. Chair will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Here's second, discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Item 10, approval of minutes of 1 1822. Everyone sign off on them, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Great. Chair will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item 11, demand. Supervisor Moletta. Mr. Chair, move to approve demands totaling $916,053.42, of which $295,200.56 are from the general fund. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We compare our bills. Item 12 and 13 are related to the executive session. So at this time, I will move on to item G, executive session. Chair will entertain a motion for us to convene into executive session pursuant to ARS section 38-431, 03A, 3, and 4, discussion and consultation for legal advice regarding settlement agreement with CenturyLink, effective February 1st, 2022, and it's re century link loyalty advantage agreement originally effective May 18th of 2018. Chair will entertain the motion. So moved. So here a second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. So we will now adjourn, uh, recess our meeting and convene into executive session. 
So we'll ask everyone to uh, please exit the room. We'll have the executive session in here, and then we'll open it back up for the action items. Thank you. Okay, folks, at this time, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn our executive session and reconvene regular meeting. So moved. There is a second. Second. Discussion. Uh, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We'll no, now go to action item 12, discussion possible action to approve settlement agreement with CenturyLink Sales Solutions, Inc. For account number 89678187 through the school superintendent, Chair will entertain a motion. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the settlement agreement with CenturyLink Sales Solutions, Inc. For account number 89678187 and authorize the county school superintendent of schools to sign and to strike the board as a signors. Second. Oh, yeah, yeah, second. There's a second. Discussion. I would also suggest that we um, make this public. Okay. Never mind. Okay. okay. So, 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 so. In other words, it's just an agreement between uh, the school superintendent and and Century Link Sales Solutions. So yes. that's why we're going to keep yes. the legal document the way it is. That's correct. It also has to do with um, the terms in the settlement okay. and our interaction with Arizona law. Okay. So, um, Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. So there's a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item 13, discussion possible action to approve intergovernmental agreement with Santa Cruz Elementary School District number 28 for internet services pursuant to the E-rate program under Century Link Contract Account 89678187 until August 14th, 2024. Charles entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. I we believe we've concluded the people's business and the last item is adjournment. Charles entertain a motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. <laughs>